Uh, okay, so Aaron, we've been talking about how some of uh, the initial uh, ways in which you were trained in drawing have uh, assumptions behind them. And though they appear, you know, to be a list of uh, rules and uh, strategies, as in the, the Heinrich uh, Wolflin uh, pairs of uh, aesthetic oppositions that are, you know, universal, uh, that in fact that uh, there are class distinctions, gender distinctions, and um, distinctions of what's sometimes referred to as value. And value is articulated in human culture in a number of ways. Uh, there's an economic dimension to it, and there are sorting mechanisms within any distribution of value that uh, can become somewhat hidden in articulations and uh, definitions of ways of doing and ways of making, and even in the articulation of space itself. Uh, and and I want to today uh, have you read this this passage from uh, Wikipedia that uh, discusses this kind of way of uh, filling a flat surface, filling a canvas, as you used to do, that they refer to as uh, horror vac way, which is from Greek, and it. Uh, ultimately derives from this expression of Aristotle's where he said uh, nature abhors a vacuum. Well even the even the uh, the name for this way of making right is colonialized and comes from Aristotle and expresses this almost uh, hysterical or, or anxiety ridden notion of the fear of empty space where in fact there may be a lot of other reasons uh, to provide uh, elements of uh, depth and fullness to these uh, so-called recessed spaces, right? So, you know, Aaron, you know, I, we, we've discussed the way that in your drawings, and you know, particularly the early ones, there was a lot of empty space, right? And one of the assumptions, uh, in that empty space uh, belonged to, you know, this kind of Wolflinian interpretation of uh, these oppositions in art making. But what I want to do today is suggest that there are other ways of looking at your production of that space and the hidden assumptions of value in creating those empty spaces. Okay, Aaron, so would you read this description of uh, of the relationship between horror vac way and uh, and value that comes from the Wikipedia site for us there is an inverse relationship between horror vacuum and value perception commercial designers favor visual clarity in shop window displays and advertising to appeal to affluent and well-educated consumers on the premise that understatement and restraint appeals to more affluent and educated audiences in one study 100 clothing stores were surveyed to find patterns and relationship between how efficiently the store's real estate was used in the store's brand prestige Bulk sales shops and chain stores were found to fill their window displays to maximum capacity, while high-end boutiques often used their space sparsely, with no price tags, the assumption being that if a passer by needed to know the price, they could not afford it. All right, thank you, and that was terrific. And, and another suggestion that I want to make in, in reading that passage is that the high end of uh, clothing design, right, for the fashion industry, is always already patriarchal. And it doesn't matter whether the fashion designer, the individual, the entity designing the fashion, is a man or a woman. But the play with that open space and these ideas of aesthetics within high fashion are inevitably bound 
to patriarchy and to a controlling of woman's body with these vestments, right? With these manufactured goods. And the, the window, the open window displays that utilize all this space is again about that because in some way you could say it's a psychological inversion, right? The, the control of, of woman's body in these, these manufactured aesthetic objects, clothing, is framed as giving uh, the entity of the woman framed by, by this patriarchy, all of this open space and freedom, right? And so it's a necessary requirement, but it's not only uh, loaded with ideological assumptions of value and capital and exchange, but it's powerfully patriarchal. Love the way you walk Walk on 